dear colleagues, uh, I apologize for being late. Uh, just uh, I had a feeling that I have lost my USB. So I would like to give a presentation that I gave yesterday. But uh, yesterday it was like a brief presentation. And now it will be an extended format. And I will tell you about some other things. So I will be talking about how teleclinica are applied um, nowadays. And I'd like to draw your attention to the following. So this area is included into the healthcare development strategy and we are implementing it and the second part that is related to healthcare system being interested in the introduction of new methodologies that will enable us to use the existing resources in a new way. So the reasons for the emergence of it, so the lack of resources and the different uh, situation with personnel in different regions and the necessity of uh, implementing and elaborating new standards for treatment, also the working out the new registries and also providing and access to equal possibilities of uh, diagnostics. So these are the challenges that we are facing uh, today. So very often we face some misunderstanding of different terms like uh, telemedicine and teleclinica, telepathology. So telemedicine, that is a, a term, a definition of, di of remote diagnostics and also the possibility of having discussions of uh, uh, how we should uh, follow up uh, a patient that is a new area. It is described in uh, literature and some of uh, uh, our um uh, leading specialist gave comments about that, but it's not about this now. So what about the telepathology? It is very convenient for me to um, give speech now because uh, it was a great speech given by Mr. Bella. Uh, so telepathology is an area related to uh, the diagnostics in clinical morphology. So it unites uh, histology, but also cytology. Uh, we have discussed that with the colleagues. It is one of of uh, the tools uh, that helps us to unite in uh, one clinical area, morphologist, cytologist, and the faster and uh, the more consultations we have uh, and uh, the, f uh, the um, uh, the more we listen to our cytologists, the faster we will be able to overcome the existing barriers. And I'd like to mention that uh, uh, currently the technology that is provided to us, it is the most state-of-the-art technology, and this is the most, uh, this is the fastest technology. It is uh, developing quite uh, actively and dynamically, and it provides some remote uh, consultation and gives uh, an opportunity to provide counseling from uh, your tablet, from your smartphone, uh, from different uh, types of devices, and it allows you uh, to create your own forums, your own discussions, and to promote new types of methods, what Nina uh, has mentioned about remote consultations. So that is her ideology, uh, and uh, it allows you to implement uh, this methodology in other regions, in remote regions of of, uh, the Russian Federation so the methods of the research that are used in this area they are quite diverse ones uh, so we can uh, have different types of uh, colorings and stainings like in fish analysis unfortunately uh, fish microslides die out faster than other samples uh, but um, I think you will share this viewpoint about uh, having this promising methodology because it has uh, all the necessary evidence-based databases and uh, also the color chemistry uh, has uh, its right uh, for existence. Here we have the fluorescence. Mr. Bella showed it in a beautiful way so not everybody can see such a picture, such an image in microscope. So digital technology 
technologies allow us to see that and uh, this is a non-linear approach and it helps us to engage young specialists which is very important what Mr. Bella demonstrated some equal zones in different colorings and it um, has its own areas and it uh, provides the demonstration and it helps you uh, to make the right diagnosis uh, which is also uh, very important and uh, going further the image when uh, simultaneously we have the histologi histological research and cytological research and data and can be viewed simultaneously it's not a uh, picture it is a live microslide and you can uh, make the quantification simultaneously and you can increase or decrease intensification so you can play it uh, with it as you like and getting back to the methods that intersect with what Nina has mentioned and Anna Sergeyevna some training uh, methodology that are quite necessary and they allow us to accelerate the training process and um, they can be training at their workplaces but also remotely. Uh, this is teleclinic, which we are discussing now. This is a mechanism, a new mechanism, which allows the remote consulting among several doctors. Uh, so to speak, a kind of concilium. The patient can take part in it. The primary diagnostics uh, is... Uh, uh, very difficult to uh, get the uh, diagn uh, diagnose if it is um, maybe negative and um, uh, therefore teleclinic makes it possible to consult with the leading experts uh, in oncology. It is possible to record it and to save it, to show it, this is possible for post-surgery period because the a patient after the uh, surgery wants to know the dynamic, the perspectives of the ways of behavior. It is also decided during the concilium. This is not, this is a real picture from the oncological clinic in Irkutsk. You see on the right side there is a clinicist, the uh, doctor who is responsible for it. These are morphologist, cytologist, radiologist, uh, surger, surgeon and uh, chemiotherapeut and additional doctors if it is needed. The central picture uh, shows the histological uh, uh, slide and to the left there is a picture of the CT we can uh, zoom in zoom out to uh, mark the zones uh, uh, discuss it everything is uh, recorded as a video conference and can be kept in the medical history records the lower picture is uh, has been already shown to you and special video equipment which can uh, make it possible and this is the operational desk uh, from which the pictures can be put on the screen maybe the scans of the medical his uh, history records these can be CT analysis and all other types of images. This is an example of teleclinic. This is the inauguration of teleclinic in uh, Irkutsk in Hainan, in China. They uh, conduct consultations. Many Chinese uh, citizens uh, who were born in Russia, they would like to work with Russian doctors um, because they don't rely to the Chinese medical system. 
this is a flexible mechanism, teleclinics and telepathology, telepathology. They make it possible to include the morthologists into the consulta consultation process. So there is one team of high, uh, histologists, uh, cytologists and morthologists when morthologists play a very important part in diagnostic and in choosing the tactics of treatment to avoid hyperdiagnostics, hyper influence on the patient, the cytologists also play their role. They have the documented approval and they can discuss it. This teleclinic teleconsultation can be done uh, afterwards so that there is no doctor to doctor conflict. The second thing, we can share best practices and skills. It is not your discovery, this is the world which is discussing it, and for example, and you can introduce this world methodology for the chief doctor. There can be some difficult diagnostic cases when there is or there is no uh, tumor or something like that, and this helps to avoid risks, risks of complications. And uh, it provides the the treatment, correct the correct treatment with medicaments. For the chief doctor, it is very important. He gets less complications. And uh, one more thing, this is post-surgery patients who will come back. and uh, who can pay for uh, such uh, teleconferences. Usually the chief doctors do not see this opportunity, but when, we see but when they see that there is a financial benefit, then the chief doctor is really glad to have such teleclinics. is the uh, can be regional networks of such teleclinics for oncological clinics when in a certain region there is a network and uh, the significant figure starts to work on this uh, these uh, guidelines and evaluation methods they have the consultants after that, they start to prevail and their practice uh, can be shared with other regions. There can be national networks for the leading experts, for pathologists, not for morthologists only, but for pathologists, for other doctors. It is possible to establish the multidisciplinary teleclinics. There can be not only oncological patients, but also other patients. And this means the load on the uh, equipment, the load on the clinics. And now, coming back to the chief doctors and you, the morthologists are the last chain in uh, uh, resource spreading. These are the tools which can uh, change the situation when the uh, uh, chief doctors and the financial department sees that you bring profit, uh, the attitude will change and they will uh, pay more attention to you and your activities. 
And uh, another thing which is very significant is the uh, uh, personnel. It is possible to improve educational programs. Morphology and histology are high technologies and it is attractive. They are attractive for the young experts. The scientific research conducted by you will be better if you use digital technologies. That's it. Thank you for your attention. I'm sorry that I was late a bit. If you have any questions, you're welcome with them.